thing that I find most frustrating about it is I know the creature is real. I am convinced, and I'm going to go one step further and build a model. Uh, I got a call from uh, the New York Times. The first thing they asked was, have you seen the Sasquatch yet? And uh, could we interview Ken Walker? Hello, my ragtime gal. This isn't an easy thing to do, because what's it going to look like when it's done? Is it going to look like Snuffleupagus? Half the people don't believe this thing exists anyway, so they're going to think that I'm just being creepy. There's Ken. There he is. All right. Have we got the Zoom chaos figured out now, guys? <laughs> you know, it's, it's a whole almost new world. always chaos somehow. So <laughs> It's crazy. Well, first of all, it's great to see you both again. I don't know if you remember me from Slam Dance a few months ago. I do. I, you know, that was a, that was kind of a crazy. It was in the bar. It was really loud, right? right. We, we had. I a, thought uh, that was you. Yeah. We got thrown out of like yeah. two different places. It was chaos. <laughs> that, that, that I can't remember the uh, I can't remember the name of the bar, but the people there were so generous. They let us set up our little table there and we had like 40 or 50 interviews over the next couple of days it was crazy but we were literally yeah. homeless with nowhere to do these interviews and uh, so we just had people coming through like an assembly line it was crazy so and it's so weird to think about the interaction that we all had <laughs> you know i mean oh, yeah. all those people and the little rooms and, it's and like now about, it, it's hard to I, even imagine and what I love about being there again every year, we are in that same area, is that we're next to Slam Dance, the offices and where it's all going down. Yeah. You know, I know Sundance is going on, but we were, we were always right next door. That used to be the, the Blue Iguana Lounge. We were there too, that restaurant, but we were always next door to Slam Dance. So it was so, always great to get filmmakers and people from the festival, from Slam Dance coming over. And because we wanted to include everybody, you know, I love, I love uh, both yeah. festivals. So uh, well, let's, let's talk about that first. I was going to do it later, but since we talked about it, tell me about the Slam Dance experience. How, how, how did it go? for you guys it was great uh you know it's kind of chaotic um yeah you want to see movies but you're busy doing press and then you know we're also <laughs> busy hauling patty the bigfoot around so you know getting her in and out of the treasure mountain inn uh lobby and you know lifting her up over that railing and getting her down and walking her down the street i got some great <laughs> pictures in front of her too it was just awesome i saw that and i could not wait to get all these photos up on instagram and people are just going crazy going what, what is that what is going on there i go it's the most outrageous documentary we've ever seen like, they got a bigfoot not exactly <laughs> we kind yeah. of got a bigfoot so and, you know, my knowledge of taxidermy is Norman Bates and Psycho or even, you know, Dinner for Schmucks where he made the little mice where he stuffed them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I know, that's, everyone says Psycho, but I think of Dinner for Schmucks. And this is such a great insight to the world of taxidermy and its process. And, and Ken, was there, are you getting much feedback, you know, from people who maybe say, hey, that's maybe an industry for me or is it a dying breed? Or tell me about the history of taxidermy. Well, taxidermy, there's always been a, it's, it's a huge, actually a huge business uh, in, in, in America, especially just, just for deer heads. I think, I think just the market for uh, mannequins, you know, the foam mannequins that you buy and hang on, that put, you put your skin on, I think that's a hundred million dollar industry just a year, just for the, the deer head forms. So it's bigger than people know. It's a lot bigger. It's huge. So well, talking, but, about, but, talking about huge, you know, making a Bigfoot. So, <laughs> Dan, tell oh, me yeah. about how your guys' paths crossed. You know, I understand you were trying to find a documentary or a subject matter for taxidermy, and, and you found Ken, and Ken was working on this Northwest Yeti. <laughs> well, he told me he was going to build the, the, the Bigfoot, and, uh, you know, that's when I knew that that was going to be a great movie. Uh, you know, I'd been searching for a character, you know, to kind of drive a, a documentary about taxidermy, but I, I never really knew like what the storyline might be. And so when he told me he was going to build one, I thought, well, there I get, I'll get to, you know, follow the whole process, you know, from beginning and planning to, you know, the actual build of it and then taking it to the world championships. So it seemed like a natural story arc. 
and like I told you guys at Slam Dance, I'm Generation X, so I was a little boy in the 70s, and I was obsessed with Bigfoot, anything psychic phenomenon, you know, in search of. I'd always go to the library and check out books about Bigfoot and watch mysterious monsters from Sun Classic Pictures out of Southern Utah. And, but the one memory that I have most of all was the Patterson film. I mean, after seeing that, I had many sleepless nights as a child. And I understand that, Ken, that was your blueprint for building Patty uh, for Big Fur. Yeah, I mean, you, you can't find reference to uh, build Bigfoots very often, but believe it or not, there's a lot of footage and stills and things that people take that, you know, that, that are usually, you know, something running in the trees, but the, uh, the Patterson footage, uh, was perfect reference, you know, I was able to uh, template it, as I say, you know, find out where all the joints are, the bone links, and then, and then extrapolate all that and build from there, which I should also add are completely different than human parameters. So, yeah, it was, um, it was uh, a very good reference for me to build something that I, I feel is accurate. Well, I think other than the, the, Zap the Zapruder film from Kennedy's assassination, I think the most uh, looked at piece of film is probably the Patterson film. And so after looking at it so many times and, and making your sculpture and your taxidermy after the, after the Bigfoot, what is your guys' consensus? Is it faked? Is it a suit? Is it really some creature that lives in the Northwest? I mean, there's still a debate to this day. Well, I think it's real. It, it, once they stabilized it and zoomed it in and slowed it down, I took, it didn't take me very long to realize that, uh, no, that's real because I, I'm, I'm quite familiar with the special effects of 1967 and the ability to make such a film and the, also the ability to make a costume. And no, it, it uh, and also you, I can see the weight. I can see the, the, the difference in, uh, I mean, just the shoulder balls, they're three feet apart. <laughs> You know, three feet apart. Go go to the gym and find the biggest guy and measure the center of his shoulder joints from one to the other and find a guy where they're 36 inches apart. And I tell you, Dan, I had many sleepless nights as a kid when, when the Bigfoot would turn and look at the camera. <laughs> you know, that is what just, you know, leaves you cold. You're just like, oh, well, that could be a guy in a suit or it could be a big yeah. But when it does that, it does this movement and then looks, you just, and then they freeze frame it. It's like, that is just creepy. So... You know, how, how important was this, was uh, the Patterson film in, in this documentary? Well, for me, you know, I, I had never really thought about Bigfoot before I met Ken. And, and that kind of set me, you know, into, you know, the research that any documentarian would do. And looking at that film and seeing it stabilized and seeing that it clearly has tits. I mean, who would fake a Bigfoot with tits? That's what, that's what kind of convinced me. It's like, well there is a good chance that that's a real one because nobody would do that. Even True. I wouldn't do that, you know? Get your mother-in-law, <laughs> look, put this suit on and walk towards that piece, that log. You know, don't worry, no one's gonna, don't worry about a bra, we'll take care Just of it. Just give her a couple beers first, she'll do it. <laughs> and you both went, I understand, to a, a, a real hotbed of Bigfoot sightings in Canada? Yeah, I, I uh, Ken had been, you know, spending some time up there and, and when I got there, you know, not long after I got there, we went up there and spent some time and I spent some time on my own up there. It's a pretty remote area. You know, and my, my roommate's obsessed with these Bigfoot shows on Discovery Channel and all that. And I'm always mocking him because, you know, these, these reality shows are always like on the verge of capturing one or they hear one or they smell one. And I keep saying, there's no science behind these TV shows. It's all sensationalism. So he's convinced. And, I, you know, as a kid, I think there's something out there. You know, but this, this day and age, you think they would find something from it. But maybe it was something that only existed, maybe the last of them back in the 60s with the Patterson film. Just photographed one up at Elbow Lake here a few weeks, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it came out of the trees and it went over the mountain. He took a bunch of photographs of it. You know, they're far away, but it's, it's a Sasquatch. The guy, and the guy's a non-believer, but he took the pictures and he says, whatever it was, wasn't human. It was too big. And, and uh, <coughs> excuse me, it's on two legs. So people seen them like crazy, you know, all, all the time. Um, I, I just think that, you know, most non-believers, you're going to have to throw one up on a table. You know what I mean? Yeah. They, there I it agree. is. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Uh, and, and whenever, like, people always say, why haven't they found remains? Well, every, anytime remains uh, are discovered in, in the woods, and they even 
think they're human. And apparently when you see the skulls on them, they look very human. They call the police. They don't take it home and say, hey, look, I found some dead dude in the forest. Look how big he was, you know. They call the police because they, they think it might be a murder scene or something. Or it could be Indian artifacts, you know. There's all kinds of things. And so what usually happens, and I know a few cases like this, is when they get there, uh, other people show up. And then the whole thing is scrubbed. It's like a crime scene. People disturb it. Well, it's, yeah, but it's, it's scrubbed. And like all of a sudden there, there's no record of it. All of a sudden there's no, there's no nothing. And Dan, you're a first time filmmaker. Did you learn a lot from this production? What, what would you do oh, differently, yeah. you know, if you, to make another documentary? Well, I'd do it faster. <laughs> You know, it was, uh, the post-production was something that I, I really didn't realize how long it would take um, and how expensive it would get. But, uh, you know, just like anything you learn as, you know, I learn as I go, it, it's kind of typical route for me. Um, but I thought it went pretty well, you know, overall, you know, you know, there's, there's so much footage that I ended up cutting. And I think that's typical, you know, on a documentary, because you just don't know, but I think if I did it again, I would be able to identify the things that are useful and things that are probably not going to be useful. But, you know, nowadays it's not like you're running film, so you're just running digital. So you just let that camera run, you know. <laughs> and and uh, Ken, where can we see Patty? Is she on tour? Is she somewhere so that people can go visit? Or Because I know if I saw this documentary, I'd be on a pilgrimage to find it and get a picture with it. Well, I... I um... Actually, I, I, I gave her to uh, Dan. Dan owns her now. Dan, what's your address? <laughs> <laughs> She's here in Kansas City. She's in my living room. You know, no. I had plans. Yeah, I had plans to take her on tour. Um, Whoever breaks you know, in yeah. your house is going to have a surprise. I'll tell you that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just had my AC repair man came in and gave her quite a look. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's. Um, you know, we were going to do more festivals and, and some limited theatrical, and I was going to haul her around all summer and into the fall. But uh, it looks like those plans are dead, but we'll see. I've got a few things tentatively planned for October, so I still may take her out. And there's gotta be she'll convention. probably end up in a museum somewhere. Yeah, there's got to be Bigfoot conventions next year that you can take her to. People, you know, we have UFO ones here at Rachel, Nevada, you know, outside of Las Vegas. There's all kinds of UFO and alien conventions going on. So I'm sure there's somewhere that she can be displayed and people will go crazy for it. It's great promotion too. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of Bigfoot conventions, so they'll be back. You well, know. well, let me know which one you're going to and I'll show up because I want to okay. support it. I will. <laughs> And finally today, Ken, uh, what's your favorite Roy Orbison song? <laughs> oh, I actually, I keep discovering new ones on YouTube all the time. Uh, uh, there's, uh, I guess, as far as the mainstream songs, I guess I would have to say either It's Over or In Dreams. I could uh, never hear In Dreams without and, thinking of uh, And then there's over. a few <laughs> obscure ones like, oh, I know that I'd be uh, myself. To Every it, time but, uh, I another, another one, if you can. Go ahead. Oh, another another one that you might want to check out is uh, Roy Orbison's version of "Danny Boy." Uh, it's quite good. Well, one of my favorite concerts is the Black and White. I just I've seen that about fifty times. You know, to yeah. see Katie Lang and Melissa them doing background for him, you know, I think that's when, and there's the, the Bruce Springsteen play. I mean, that's one of the greatest concerts ever. And I have to say, mine is Blue Bayou. Every I love that song. I just, that's my favorite. Blue Bayou is, is very good. As a matter of fact, uh, the singer Burton Cummings, that's his favorite Roy Orbison song. Well, I'm asking this because if people are like, what are we talking about Roy Orbison with Bigfoot? Because you do a tribute band or you're a big fan of Roy Orbison. I, I I used to do a tribute many years ago, uh, and so as a result, we, we, we recorded two uh, Roy Orbison songs for the movie, just, just for entertainment's value, and, and then we, uh, I wrote one song and we recorded that too for the, for the movie, so, so that was cool. That was kind of on a bucket list item, you know? Not, not, not only to have, uh, you know, go in and, and into a studio with musicians and write my own song, but to put it in a movie. <laughs> Yeah. Well, guys, congratulations, Big Fur. Is uh, hitting video on demand now, or where can people find it? Just about anywhere you want to, you know, purchase or, or rent a movie. It's on Amazon and iTunes and, uh, you know, Vimeo and Vudu and YouTube. It's on, it's on just about every place. Wonderful. Well, guys, congratulations on Big Fur. It's been a wonderful journey. I'm glad I came along with you guys. And, uh, you know, come visit us in Las Vegas when you have a chance, when everything kind of calms down. We'd love to have you.
when it cools down, we'll come yes. down. <laughs> it's 100, get this, it's 115 for the next 10 days here. We have, I have not left the house. It's that hot, yeah, so. Wow. Yeah. But anyway, sister, thank you so much for talking to me, Ken. Lives in, huh? My sister lives in Vegas. Oh, well, she's not going outside, I'll tell you that. <laughs> no. All right, well, All right. thanks so much, Jeffrey. Thanks so much, guys. Take care and good luck with the film. <laughs>